Hi everyone, in this video we're going to look at how to create a 2D chamfer toolpath in Makera Cam. Now in previous versions of Makera Cam to create a 2D chamfering toolpath, you would of course need a two-dimensional design, like the design that you can see I have here for our spinner example from one of our other tutorials that we have. And you would also typically create a contour toolpath and then offset the chamfering bit based upon the contour. But in the latest version of Makera Cam, you'll see that we now have the option to immediately create a two-dimensional chamfer that sets a lot of the parameters for us. So let's do so. So I've hidden a lot of the other toolpaths and things, so it's a little bit easier to see what I have going on here. And I'm just going to select several of the outlines in my design as I want to chamfer the edges of these parts. So I've selected more than one outline uh, because that's what I'm doing for this design here. And then I'm then going to create a 2D chamfer toolpath. Now you'll see that our parameters are slightly different from a contour toolpath whenever creating chamfers. The first is the start depth, so are you machining from the surface of your stock or are you machining within or above your stock? And then you have your chamfer depth, so I'm going to chamfer at a depth of one millimeter. Now what this tip depth offset does is it will offset the tip of the chamfering bit based upon the line that you've selected. So a depth offset of zero will follow the tip right along this line, essentially chamfering right on your cut, giving you an edge to either side of the line. If you offset in the negative, it'll bring you to the inside of your design. If you offset to the positive, it'll bring you to the outside of your design, depending on the strategy that you've chosen, which we'll look at in a moment. Typically, you offset a small amount depending on the diameter of your chamfering bit, so say half a millimeter, which will place my chamfering bit half a millimeter off of this outer edge, allowing me to chamfer it as I go. Next, you can change your clearance heights away from the defaults if you want to work around any clamps or fixtures, and then we can select our tool. And of course, to create a chamfering cut, we need to select a chamfer tool, and you'll see that the cutting parameters should be automatically selected based upon the material that you're working with. You can choose to adjust your cutting parameters away from the default feeds and speeds if you'd like, but these are all based upon our libraries for our materials and the recommended settings. You can also choose to reassign the chamfering tool to be a different tool number if you'd like, uh, if you have it set to a specific position within, uh, say, for example, your automatic tool changer, or to make sure that it's not the same number as another tool that you've used previously. And then you have the option to adjust your cutting strategies. So you can either run the chamfer along the inside of your selected line, which for example in this design would chamfer here on the inner edge, and that's not what I'd like to do. Instead, for this part, I want to make sure that I'm running the chamfer on the outside, as I'm chamfering the outer edges of these cuts that I've already created. And of course, you can change your cutting direction from conventional to climb milling, like with many of our other toolpaths. So once set, we can click Calculate, and we'll see that we have this chamfering toolpath that runs along the outlines of each of our parts. So using a two-dimensional chamfering toolpath doesn't necessarily change the result as what you could have done previously in Make Care Cam using a contour toolpath. It does just make setting the different chamfering parameters a little bit easier to do and less cumbersome when you're creating a chamfering toolpath. Thanks for watching and of course stay tuned for more on the Make Care channel and wiki site.